I seem to be standing in front of the ruins of an old clay house. In a way, yes, these are ruins made of clay, except it's not a house, but a temple. And not just a temple, but a Buddhist temple, and not just old, but from the Middle Ages. Buddhist temple in Kyrgyzstan from the Middle Ages? Let me invite you to learn the answers together. My name is Kanike, and I am traveling to medieval settlements of the Chui Valley. My childhood was international, growing up alongside Kazakhs, Kurds, Russians and Dungans. These different cultures enriched me as a person and made me like others, a world citizen. Because of the Silk Road, this land has long been the meeting place of different cultures. So there are many archaeological sites surviving from the Middle Ages. And today we will be visiting three inscribed in UNESCO's World Heritage List. Right now I am on my way to a unique place, Krasnaya Rechka settlement. Historians believe there was a big city where Silk Road caravans would rest. This was a settlement, a place where centuries ago there was a town with fortress walls. Krasnaya Rechka is only 36 kilometers away from Bishkek. You can travel there by car like we are doing or by minibus. Group tours are also available. But before we talk about the cities of the Silk Road, let's refresh our knowledge about this route. The Silk Road was not a single route, but a system of caravan trade routes stretching from China to Europe. These routes gradually emerged over the centuries, where people from different cultures and goods from different parts of the world intersected. The main commodity that wandered along the caravan routes was silk, hence the term Silk Road appeared, which was invented by the German geographer Ferdinand von Richthofen in 1877. For some time in Europe, the silk from China was more expensive than gold. From the Middle East and Central Asia, merchants brought wool and cotton. From South and Southeast Asia came spices, such as pepper, nutmeg, cinnamon, cloves and others, which Europeans used for cuisine, medicine and food preservation. But on the caravan routes, people exchanged not only silk and other goods, the exchange of knowledge, ideas and technologies was of great importance. For example, even religions spread from one territory to another, such as Buddhism, which was born in India and immigrated to Southeast Asia through the Silk Road, where it's still a dominant religion to this day. Krasnaya Rechka, where we are heading, is a part of Chanyan Tianshan Corridor, a 5,000 km route that passes through modern-day China, Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan. On the way you will see these cool bus stops, sort of modern caravans arise for modern traveler. Local people can tell us a lot about their places, so we are here with Elvira Kingashbekovna. Hello. Hello. Elvira is a third-generation resident of Krasnaya Rechka and also a local government deputy. Now we are entering Krasnaya Rechka settlement, 
archaeologists know of the existence of Nevaket, a big and important city of the Silk Road, we are used to hearing that our lands are the lands of nomads, that it is still a surprise that in the Middle Ages Chui Valley had a substantial sedentary population. Nevaket means new city in the Sogdian language. But unfortunately, all that remains of the settlement covering 400 hectares are these hills. The scale is impressive. Founded in the 7th century, Nevaket continued to develop into the 9th century. In the 10th to 12th centuries, it was part of the Karahanid Khanate and was an important center for Christianity. Archaeological excavations revealed the presence of Zoroastrians, Christians, Buddhists and Muslims. Artifacts with Sogdian, Uyghur, Syriac, Brahmi inscriptions show that Nevaket was a city where people of different backgrounds and religions coexisted. We are now standing on what is likely a caravan sarai built between the 10th and 11th centuries. Now it seems like a plain field, but thanks to archaeologists working on this site since 1868, this plain field reveals its vivid past. More than 150 years of archaeological research on this site has revealed a huge number of finds such as Buddhist temples, Zoroastrian burials, Christian pectoral crosses, workshops, wineries, household items, horse equipment, jewelry and coins. The most famous object found here was the 12-meter statue of Buddha. Buddhism for many in the area nowadays is something distant, something seen in the movies or online. Here, though, centuries earlier, it was visibly present. Life in the transit city for caravan traders was lively. For example, there were wine production, gardens, irrigation canals, religious temples, markets and workshops. And this is the most prominent building on the settlement, the second Buddhist temple, orientated to the cardinal points and located on the remains of an earlier structure. The temple was a square domed sanctuary with only one eastward exit. A hole open to the east forms in front of the sanctuary. Researchers found the remains of wall paintings, fragments of sculptures, clay curls of hair and mold for their manufacture. I would really love to see the past with my own eyes. Now a specialist will tell us why this place is significant and attracts visitors from all over the world. The medieval Buddhism here is of interest because this is the furthest northwest point it reached. Interestingly, it came by two routes. Firstly, missionaries during Chinese expansion. This is the Chinese wave. And a little later, a North Indian wave, suggested by a bronze sculpture dated 9th-10th century that was made in northern India. This, perhaps, was all due to the situation in eastern Turkestan that featured a battle between the powerful Tibet and the Uyghur state. The third wave was quite late. The Kalmaks, after conquering the area of modern-day Kyrgyzstan and Kazakhstan, tried to master this territory by making their Buddhist temples in the open air. This is why we see in many places, well, not really in many places, but at least in Istikul, the famous mantra Om Mani Padme Hum. It is amazing, objects made of clay are really hard to preserve. This is so rare. From 2004 to 2007, the second Buddhist temple was museified within a UNESCO project. A 2019-2022 project supported by the European Union carried out conservation work and updated information stands. People from all over the world come here to see these ruins. It is sad that people from our country barely know and rarely visit this place. Now we are on the citadel. 
In childhood, I remember we used to play here. And to be honest, I did not think then it was an important object. But now, of course, we understand that this place is a legacy of our ancestors. So many centuries have passed, and these are the remains that left. We must preserve it and develop tourism here, so people know the past, the history. We have to make sure this monument is well preserved for next generations. Most residents of the village didn't know about this important archaeological site. This changed in 2019, when Elvira, supported by the public fund, held a festival that introduced the medieval city to the villagers. There is a small museum room in the local cultural center. We decided to drop by and see the artifacts with our own eyes. Touchingly, this historic meeting place is still home to people of different backgrounds and religions. There are 19 nationalities living in Krasnaya Rechka. They are Turks, Kazakhs, Dongans, Russians and others. Let's ask them about the medieval settlement. Could you please tell me what's your name and what do you do? My name is Manas. I'm 22 years old. I'm a student and at the moment I work here. What do you know about Nevaket? They say it was a city back in the days which was a part of the Silk Road, so the historical place. When we were children, we grazed the cattle there, so I witnessed a lot of archaeological excavations on the site. They found bones and other stuff. Are there many tourists who come to visit the settlement? Uh, yes, when we grazed cattle, there were many tourists from Austria, England and America. What's your name? Tashtan. What's your background? I'm Turkish. I was born here, right there. See the gas station? I was born next to it in 1965. And you have lived here your whole life? Yes. So you must have heard something about the settlement since childhood. I'll tell you more. I worked on excavations. And once I even found a chunk of gold. Old people of this place used to tell it was the richest city during Silk Road times. They traded special goods here. Though undoubtedly different from the once flourishing city of Nevaket, the modern village Krasnaya Rechka, like its predecessor a thousand years ago, continues to thrive. One thing is clear, that as soon as the excavations at the main monuments are completed, then more tourists will start visiting this place. Therefore, for those who want to discover Kyrgyzstan from an unusual perspective, Krasnaya Rechka settlement should be on your must-visit list. Now I am heading to Agbishim village, which also keeps many mysteries, so check out the next episode on our channel. <laughs>